morning everybody so <clears throat> what we got in store for today is supposed to be the hottest day of the year always pick the hottest days of the year to do your huge projects um, basically going to be going through and fixing some things in the fuel system and uh, doing a little upgrade so uh, the last uh, year or so I've been getting a uh, it's a P1432, which is the right hand tank sender. And uh, so basically what would happen is you would drive the car and, and uh, if you went like a half an hour on a drive, your fuel tank would drop to zero or fuel quantity would drop to zero. And uh, your low fuel warning light would come on the dashboard. And uh, there wasn't enough Tecron in the world to get this one to start behaving so yesterday I didn't film it um, I went ahead and replaced that guy this is the current GM one uh, the hardest part of the job of course is just getting the fuel out of the tanks obviously drive it down as low as you can and then uh, I didn't even bother pumping the rest of it out I just drained it out of the out of the tank with some cans and funnels underneath the the uh, tanks and it, it all worked out just fine but anyways the premise of this video is um, we're going to be installing today the Racetronics uh, complete kit uh, RFPK-007 I believe is for the 1997 to 99 or 2000 uh, C5 Corvettes so it's got a new bucket 255 pump sock it's all kind of put together and ready to go and then really the heart of this whole system is their direct uh, battery feed or in this case off the alternator wire harness with its own relay um, you can also uh, easily uh, adapt in a boost to pump voltage uh, increaser unit uh, if you will uh, so yeah we'll uh, get the other side opened up and start replacing the uh, pump and then get the wire harness put in uh, so yeah I know, I know a lot of guys out there they like to build these kits kind of themselves uh, and that's cool I respect that uh, but for the price of this kit it's like $220 I got a lot of stuff going on it's busy uh, it's kind of nice to be able to just have something that I can just put on. It would take me eons just to build this wire harness if I did it from scratch and having to get all the supplies. So, like I said, for 220 bucks, I think this is a good kit. So, let's get started. All right, we got the three fuel lines taken off. Uh, this particular car has the what I call the normal. Uh, fuel metal fuel connectors um, it doesn't have the little plastic clips I guess some of the C5s have the little plastic clips you'll need a 3 8 and a 5 16 fuel line disconnect tool got our connector uh, removed and we are ready to take the uh, six bolts out of the back of the tank and we'll uh, get the fuel sender out after that all right, we got the bolts taken out and we've slid the uh, fuel sender and pump assembly back a little bit. From what I have gathered on the internet, now what we want to do is we want to actually unclip the fuel sender from the bracket and we're gonna try and weasel that guy out of there by himself. I guess you don't wanna try and rip the whole assembly out of the tank in, in one piece, especially if you're gonna reuse that fuel sender. Um, oh. Good old public service announcement. It kind of goes without saying. If you're going to do this job and work on your fuel system, uh, make sure you're well ventilated, door open, fans running, whatever you need to do. You don't want to be uh, filling yourself up full of uh, gas fumes and having any real bad fire hazards. Okay, so a couple points of interest here on uh, being able to get this sender out of the tank. Uh, you need to loosen the tank up 
the 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 retaining plate. I guess some people call it a skid plate, but I think it's really just there to hold the tank up in the car. There's one, two, three, four, I believe five bolts. These guys right here. Uh, I think they're 13 millimeters. Pretty sure, yeah, they're 13 millimeter heads. So I have um, three of them out, uh, one on the outside and two of them on the inboard side. And then I have kind of two opposing each other that are remaining in the car. They're backed almost all the way out, which lets the tank kind of move around a little bit. That'll get this pan down low enough where you can get the sender out. The next point of interest. I read about this and then I forgot about it. In the Racetronics kit, they give you this cute little diaper pin. And that is for removing the fuel sender uh, sockets from this black connector. So you're just going to put this... I can't do this with uh, one hand, but you're going to put this in the pinhole uh, next to the socket and release it and then it will push out of the block. Okay, so now the pump wiring is free. You want to try and get your float arm out of there without bending it all to hell. It takes a little bit of finagle and I don't think I can do it with one hand. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I should have bought a new one of these, and I didn't. Um, but that being said, I'm not showing any codes for this guy uh, in my fuel quantity system. So I think what I'm going to do is just clean him up real good, make sure the contactors are in good shape. It's my understanding that it's usually the passenger one that fails uh, because that tank is often left dry over there if you're less than a half a tank of fuel which lets that uh, rheostat, if you will, uh, get uh, tarnished or maybe even corroded a little bit. But uh, we'll clean this guy up and reuse him. This is the plastic retaining clip for that wire harness uh, connector, this guy right here. When this guy snapped in place, it locks those sockets in the connector. So the hole in the tank is just big enough to Weasel the fuel pump through. Make sure you have a drain bucket to try not to spill. So the sock is going to be dragging out next. We'll be putting a new sock in there. It's a messy job. It's just no two ways about it. We'll let this guy kind of drip dry a minute, get out of the cramp confines, and go over to the other side of the garage where it's more open. Like a dummy, I always do these kind of jobs with the uh, car parked up against the wall. So I'm literally up against the garage wall. You can see how kind of tight this is. We're playing around with the meter and the um, fuel quantity sender. So we're just kind of doing a resistance check here. So it looks like at the top end we're shoot should be I'm assuming it's 200 and as we sweep towards the other end it should be about 40 
so I think this guy's going to live another day. And if I had to go in there and change them out, it's the worst part of the job is, of course, just draining the main fuel. The job itself isn't too bad. I went ahead and cleaned up the contact a little bit where it sweeps just ever so slightly lightly with a um, rubberized uh, eraser. Not, not an old school, really abrasive eraser. And uh, it looks pretty good. So let's get the uh, fuel pump swapped out. I'm going to be reusing my tank gasket. Uh, if you elect to do that, make sure it's in really good shape and it's not all dried out and cracked. You can buy these by themselves. I think they're like 10 bucks. So I'm just kind of just kind of getting a look at how everything's routed. So it looks like we have three tabs that we need to loosen up to get this uh, pump off. Which would be nice because then I can get rid of the fueling mess. to show you guys what it's like it's not going to use the words in real life but I guess it is kind of in real life so we got to get that tube off of the base I guess I'm going to have to cut off that uh, crimp guy right here okay so that was the trick don't bother trying to cut off the crimped end just take it off where it's clipped together at the bottom This is all we want. Nice and clean. As many of you know, this car has got pretty low miles for a 1997. I think we're sitting at like 33,000 miles right now. I'm going to leave the bag on the pump for as long as possible. Gonna go through there. The pump wires. The pump wires go in this little 90 degree notch right here. There. So line the base up with the uh, plastic fuel tube and that'll set your orientation on the three clips. There 
there she goes. Woo. That's tricky to get started in that plastic. Just make sure your wires don't get pinched in there. So our wires are still free. They're not pinched in there. Our hose is coming through good. I do kind of want to see if I can get this pushed all the way down. Although I don't know if it's super critical. Okay, so here's where we're at. I had to take a little break. We're about ready to put this back in the tank. I got the hose routed and uh, got the metal crimp put on. If you do not have the special pliers for crimping this style clamp, I cheat all the time and I use this style channel lock cutter. And obviously if you squeeze on it just right, you're not going to cut the thing clean off or anything in it. It uh, puts a very nice crimp on there. So. I'm going to leave the wiring disconnected for now until I get it kind of set in the, the, in the tank. Then we'll get the uh, sender put back uh, on and then we'll hook the wires up. Okay, so we got the pump smashed back in there. Nothing really too scary. We got the new connector uh, hooked back up. The blue wire from the sender goes across from the black wire uh, coming from the pump. And then the gray wire, I believe, would be the power wire. It used to be red on the factory pump. Uh, the tarnished white or gray whatever color the opposing sender wire is goes across from the power wire. If that makes sense. So now we just need to get it clipped back on the base. It's kind of hard to see, it's very dark in there, but I got the grounds hooked back up. And now uh, we are just about ready to put the bolts back in this guy. Apologize again for not being able to show a lot of this on camera. So this is the exact position that I snapped the fuel sender back onto the, I guess you'd call it the fuel hat. Um, they say you want to take the sender in and out unclipped from the hat uh, to avoid bending it up. And it doesn't seem to be too tricky to work with. Got it snapped in place okay using my finger and a, uh, I popped the other side in with a pair of needle nose. Real gentle and it'll go in there just fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the bolts in, torque it up to like 40, 50 inch pounds, and I'll probably put just a little bit of Loctite on there. I think I was reading somewhere that it says you're not supposed to reuse these bolts. I have no idea why that would be, uh, but they're getting reused in this example. Okay, so we're getting ready to put our wire harness in. It's pretty simple. It's your fuse holder. This goes to the uh, only post on the alternator. Basically battery power fed by the alternator. What I'm gonna do is try and get this run above the tunnel plate uh, by the torque tube. Some guys run it below. I'm gonna try and go above This relay and this ground are going to go on the bolt that holds the um, external fuel filter in the tunnel. Then this is simply going to swing around and this is your uh, in series uh, wire connector. 
This will be the new pump connector. This will be the car connector. The original fuel pump and sender connector is going to go into this guy. I have to take one of the bolts back out on the hat to uh, ground this guy to the tank. And that should be it. So let me see if I can get this wire harness fished across the uh, tunnel plate and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so that was actually easier than I thought it was going to be. I got the uh, wire harness heading up front over the tunnel plate. Of course, this will all be this will all be strung up away from the exhaust system. I used a uh, old school metal coat hanger stretched out straight, and I've gotten it up to this point here by the clutch and. Uh, I'll get the coat hanger out of there and we'll send it up into the engine bay. Okay, going over the finalization of the wire harness quick. The uh, main power connector is bolted to the alternator ring terminal right here. And then we come down I ran the fuse holder along the factory wiring harness in here and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it laying right here and then trap it in place with the uh, headlight wiring connector. So the long end of the main harness I've got run down underneath the uh, steering shaft and then heading down along with the O2 sensor wiring heading to the back of the car. We'll come back to the fuel pump. Sorry about the fan noise. It is ridiculously abnormally hot here today. It's supposed to hit 100. That's not normal for us. Um, anyways, so I've got the other end of the long harness coming from up front. It's coming in right here. And then this is a new connector that's feeding the higher power to the 255 pump. There's the ground for these connectors. And then this is plugged into, uh, this connector is plugged into the original harness, which is going to feed the, um, it's going to trigger the new fuel pump relay system and also feed fuel quantity. Uh, the fuel gauge information. Okay, so there's the Racetronics fuel pump harness coming from up front. Then it is on top of the tunnel plate. And then it comes out. And then it comes out right there. Then we're on this side of the transmission. And, uh, Right, wrong, or indifferent, I went ahead and I mounted the uh, the new relay onto the one of the ears of the uh, transmission that doesn't do anything while the transmission's installed in the car. And then uh, you can see that the wire harness is probably about two feet too long, which uh, you know I'm sure they give a little extra so they don't have anybody complaining about how it's too short. So. I don't generally like tie wrapping stuff to brake lines or fuel lines or any other hard lines, but sometimes you just don't really have a choice. We gotta keep this stuff away from the exhaust system. 
The uh, ground, the main ground for this wire harness is on the stud for the fuel filter. And now that I've kind of buried my brand new fuel filter, I'm hoping that I'll never have to touch it again. So that's pretty much it for as far as how I chose to install this Racetronics uh, fuel pump kit. Um, I didn't really see anything else out there for doing a C5 Racetronics kit, so I went ahead and made the video for it. If you guys have any comments or suggestions or questions, by all means, you know where to put them. And uh, yeah. We'll be moving on to uh, bigger and better things with the old C5. Have a good one.